magnitude 5.2 strong quake shakes Petrolia, California on the Mendocino Ridge of the Cascadia Arc, and it's a swarm as well. Now this is a 5.2 depth of 28.6 kilometers. And uh, this comes after today's 5.7 that we had in Salt Lake City. The 5.7 was uh, felt by tens of thousands of people. It rocked over two and a half million people. And uh, Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah did not have quakes before today. And they're still ongoing. Okay, it's a quake swarm. The last one being 2.1, right on top of each other. And again, I will tell you that Salt Lake City in that exact position just south of the lake, uh, Salt Lake City is an area which is very soft sediment. It's a liquefaction area. It doesn't mean that just because we had an earthquake there that all the buildings toppled. That's not so. It's just that the sediment is soft and the buildings have more of a chance of damage in uh, this area because it's so soft. And there's movement. It's liquid underneath and it moves like a slush. Now going to the uh, Petrolia earthquakes, 5.2 and uh, quake swarms of uh, 2.3 and some odd, but they're a lot not as deep as the first one. The first one was uh, 28, the other was more shallow. And um, we know that this is on the area of Basically, the San Andreas with the, the Gorda escarpment, it's an area that is on the Mendocino Fracture Zone, the transform boundary, which is 2,500 miles long, starting off the coast of Cape Mendocino in far north California. It runs westward from Triple Junction with the San Andreas Fault and the Cascadia Subduction Zone to the southern end of Gorda Ridge. Continuing west of its junction as an inactive remnant section which extends for several hundred miles. Technically, the fracture zone is not a transform fault, but in the case of Mendocino, the term has been loosely applied to the active fault segment east of the Gorda Ridge, as well as the true fracture zone segment west of it. Mendoc the um, uh, fault section uh, demarcates the boundary between northwest moving Pacific Plate and the east-west moving Gorda Plate. Many seismologists refer to the active segment as the Mendocino Fault or Mendocino Fault Zone. The Gorda Plate is abducting under the North American Plate just offshore of Cape Mendocino, where the Mendocino Fault intersects the undersea trench of the subduction zone. It meets the San Andreas Fault. The seismically active intersection is called the Triple Junction, and specifically Mendocino Triple Junction. So the Triple Junction basically is a point where the boundaries of three tectonic plates meet. At the Triple Junction, each of the three boundaries will be one in three types, a ridge, a trench, or a transform fault. So this is what we have here, one of the worst positions in the world. Now, the Gorda plate subducting under the North America plate. The seismically active intersection called Triple Junction, and specifically the Mendocino Triple Junction. That's where we had the Petrolia quake today, and the swarm is ongoing. Tsunami studies, energy forcing, focusing around the fracture zone, have been noted, leading to increased wave heights in the area around Crescent City, California. The fracture zone is referred to as the Mendocino Escarpment, descriptively rather than named for its geologic origin. Robert Peace observed in 1965 that the alignment of a transverse tectonic zone extending from Mount Lassen volcano to the Walker Lane Fault System at the north end of Honey Lake Fault suggests it was once the continental remnus terminus of the Mendocino Fault, it forms the boundary of Madoc, Madoc Plateau in Columbia Plateau Province with the Great Basin and where it meets Honey, Honey Lake Fault. It bends 
to trend northeast across northwest corner of Nevada, where it accompanies a geologic trough that forms the Black Rock Desert. These are the details I read to you concerning Mendocino Fracture Zone from Wikipedia. Let's go take a look now at the map so you can see what is going on there. And this is the map of what we just saw. This is a closer look of it. Okay, it doesn't go any. Okay, here we go. Okay, this this is the area of our earthquake right around here, and this is just across from Lassen Peak volcano, and this is the area of Walker Lane's fault system. We're going to see it on the map, and you have Mount Shasta, Medicine Lake volcano, basically all the high threat volcanoes here. Mendocino right there, and this is where our Petrolia earthquake was right there, the Gorda escarpment right there. And the uh, Cascadia Arc right here. And let's go to our map. On, uh, here it is on Google Earth. I've pinned it for us. Gorda Escapement. And if we sort of come out a little bit, this is the Mendocino Fracture Zone, as we see here. Mendocino Ridge. Gorda Escapement. And pulling out, we could see all these fractures right here. That's Cascadia, and fixing our north. This is oh, I did too much. Sorry. This is San Andreas Fault. This is the Garlic Fault. This is Ridgecrest right here, and this is the Walker Lane Fault system right here, right here. This is Long Valley Caldera right on the Walker Lane Fault system. It's not one fault, it's a series of faults. And it's pushing basically up to the north, pushing towards the Cascadia Arc this way. Now, we had an earthquake here, 5.2. And um, going back to our, let's go here to our uh, Sizewell Berkeley. This is the swarm. This is the 5.2 that we said, Petrolia, 28.6 kilometers. Let's take this out. And the swarm. That's our swarm. But you'll notice that this map does not pin the Canadian earthquakes. And we even had a quake here today. Glen Falls yet again. Glen Falls again. Uh, we have a, a tremendous amount of quakes on the East Coast lately, don't we? Now, because we have an uptick in the uh, New Madrid Seismic Zone, Real Foot Rift Zone. But let's go back to this. We had one here, right? Yes. Let's go to the Canadian. Canadian quakes. We had one here today. Okay, let's go. 3.7. Today. Well, yesterday. All right. 3.7. 3.7. Port Hardy. Port Hardy is just north of Vancouver Island. Let's go in a little bit more. Maybe you could see it. Can we go in a little bit more here? Where's the... Uh, here we go. Okay. Let's go in a little bit more. Port Hardy. There we go. That's Vancouver Island. Vancouver Island. That's the north. That's Port Hardy, Bella Bella. And wherever we... Whenever we have... Vancouver Island earthquakes here, for some reason, they hit Walker Lane Fault System. That happened uh, July 2nd, July 2nd, and a couple of hours later, 13 hours later, no, July 2nd, we had the solar eclipse, sorry. This is July 3rd, 6.2 magnitude here, Bella Bella, Canada, and then on July Fourth, we had the 6.4 Ridgecrest earthquake, and on July 5th, on Friday uh, morning, we had the, um, no, evening, we had the uh, 7.1 in Ridgecrest. But that happened, uh, that happened in 2015 as well. We had a 6.2 magnitude here in Bella Bella, Canada, around Port Hardy. And 24 hours later, we had a, ma a moderate quake in Ridgecrest. 
This one though, in July, we had the 6.2 here, and 13 hours later, we had the 6.4 in Ridgecrest. Okay, so I wasn't surprised. I didn't make a video. I did not make a video on this one yesterday. I was just watching it. Okay, I was watching. I said, oh, okay, we're going to have something moving here because that always happens. It's just normal. It's just the pressure being released there. And this is what happened today, the 5.2 and the uh, uh, and the quake swarm continuing, as we could see. The red is the past hour. Okay, now... How many people felt this? Where is it? This one here? Oh, let's go to the shake map. Yes. No, well, no, no, no. no. I, I, I'm flittering too much. Sorry. Let's go see how many people felt it first. 1,825 felt it. Okay. So that means what? About 2,000 reported it to USGS. Uh, a lot more thousands have felt it, obviously. But let's go to the shake map right here and you can see this look at this okay this is the extent of the uh, you can't see it very well so let's go to our aerial and get look at look at that look at that look at the contours of where it shook let's pull out a little bit so we can see it better okay unfortunately they stop at a, at a block here they stop here but if you let's put in more Okay, you can see that basically they stop it at this square, but if you extrapolate a little bit more, it probably goes out more. But uh, <clears throat> that means that, all right, let's put in, uh, let's get in a little bit more close. You can see this area. Okay, there we go. Okay, so basically around inside. This is the Walker Lane fault system switching, um, pressing onto the, the arc. And it basically up to here. It basically up to here, halfway to Lassen Peak. Um, but, uh, okay, that was, it's, it's a moderate, it's 5.2 is not small. Um, and it, it, it's, it, we know that it jolts uh, nearby faults, obviously. So you have to be careful, all of you there on the West Coast, um, please be careful because that can have some kind of a ricochet effect on uh, the Walker Lane fault system and uh, down here as well. Okay, or even in the Bay Area, we don't know. And how far is that from the Bay Area, just as a matter of information? Here's miles, miles. How far that is that from the Bay Area? It's about, okay, 200 miles. Okay, so please be very careful. And I just want to show you again, because I had a comment concerning um, the liquefaction area of the Salt Lake City earthquake. Salt Lake City earthquake. Let's go here. And uh, going into this, Sorry, let's take that out. Okay. And the Salt Lake City liquefaction, we have to go to the big quake, otherwise they won't show it to us. They don't show the liquefaction for the little ones. Okay. And you can see that it's a tremendous amount of quakes all day long. All day long. Okay. I don't know how I'm going to get to the little, the, the, the bigger one. There's so many. Look at this. That's not it. That's one of the. Uh... Oh my goodness. What can I tell you? That's it. Okay. All right. Let's go to the liquefaction. Thirty, just about thirty-four thousand people reported to USGS. Um, here we go. And as you can see, it's south of the lake, and there's lakes. You know. All around it I pulled out too much sorry Salt Lake City and let's go to our aerial better to go to aerial okay that's Salt Lake and then you have other lakes around here as well and it's a valley as you can see look at that shaking everywhere it's a valley all this is a valley and that's a mountain 
but let's go to the liquefaction. Now, I'm not making this up, okay? Uh, this is this is USGS map. Okay, that's it right there. Let's take out the contours. There we go. That is that area there is liquefaction, which is logical because it's so low. It's it's just it's around the banks of the lakes. Basically, I think this was basically this was must have been one lake and this is sort of filled in with time and that's that's liquefied that's not very stable the sediment is very soft and it's not stable now just because they have a liquefaction indication there and here on the banks it doesn't mean that all the buildings are going to collapse it's just that they're uh you know they already had building uh bricks falling from buildings they all already had damage to the temple of latter-day saints the spire and the statue on top has been damaged and uh, they have told people from what someone told me that to stay out of the, uh, the buildings as much as possible because it's soft this is salt lake city right there okay let's go to the uh, topography salt lake city okay there we go this is this is USGS showing us this. It's not. I'm not making this up. Okay. And um, that's usually the case when you're around lakes. And here, this is another one right here. It's very low lying. Looks like a valley. Okay. So I'll leave links below for you for this. And uh, please be very careful because. Um, Going back to um, let's see, look at that swarm. Going back to California. Um, we may have more down here because this is pretty big, 5.2. All right, please be very careful. God bless you all, and thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.